And in keeping with our love and heart focus for this Valentine's month, we are so excited to talk to Orna and Matthew Walters about creating love on purpose. What a great concept, since I literally just came off the holiday season married to Hallmark. Lauren, <laughs> <laughs> what do you do on Christmas Eve? I'm watching a Hallmark movie. All right, what do you do on New Year's Eve? I'm watching a Hallmark movie. <laughs> yeah. My girlfriend bought me a robe and a pair of socks that say, if you can read this, leave me alone, I'm watching a Hallmark movie. <laughs> it was just the season, and I think that we are educated to believe that love happens the way it happens in Hallmark movies, and that's just not the truth. So please tell us, <laughs> how does it really happen? Well, I mean, that's exactly it, right? We have all these myths about love, right? Love will happen when you least expect it, you know? If you stop looking for love, then he'll show up, right? We, we, and the songs and the Hallmark movies and everything teaches us <laughs> that love operates differently than everything else that we do. Right. I mean, even our languaging around love, right? right? Like, oops, I slipped in a banana peel and I fell in love, right? Like this <laughs> thing that we have no control over. And, and what we know is that's not the way it worked out for us. I mean, both of us really struggled, you know, as adults looking to have lasting love and something that would really be sustainable. And it didn't happen by accident. And so we really want to bust that myth that, you know, if you want love, then you have to make having love a priority. And you guys came to it in very much the way that you now teach it, right? Which I think is spectacular. So let's talk about how you got to here. Sure. So. <laughs> When we met, we actually met in a business networking group, and um, we had our first sort of date was a one-on-one -on -one networking breakfast where we were just okay. supposed to talk about business and, mm -hmm. and how to refer business to each other. But instead, we I think we fell in love over breakfast. I love yeah. it. And okay. um, there's that fell in love. Thing Even again. the well, yeah. <laughs> 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 exactly. And we've chosen to love each other ever since. Okay, <laughs> right. Well, if you've made that choice. But the thing was, before works. that, right, we were in our 40s when that happened. Mm -hmm. And before that, we both struggled for years. Mm -hmm. uh, we both have our different stories about how we struggled and why we struggled. But we were both separately very intentional about what we were looking for and how we were going to go about creating it. So neither of you had been married before. Well, that's true. I mean, neither one of us had been married before, right. but we do say that part of our um, expertise is that between the two of us, we've pretty much made every mistake you can make in relationship <laughs> before figuring it out. Absolutely. With relationship. Yeah. Like, I had a lot of heartbreaks. I mean, Matthew still laughs at me. Like, one of my favorite things to do is go sing, like, Japanese-style karaoke where you get your own room, but instead of going with a group of friends, I go by myself, and I <laughs> sing, like, a bunch of heartbreak songs. Okay. And it's like, they still really touch me because I did. I had my heart broken over and over and over again you know we find that people either end up in one bucket or the other they're either the breaker upper the person who makes that decision most right. of the time or they have my experience where they're the breaky right the, mm -hmm. the person leaves you and so I had a lot of abandonment issues you know mm -hmm. that it wasn't gonna last or as soon as you'd hit a bump I was like up oh, there he's, he's gonna scattle off you know and oh, never honey, to be seen again <laughs> You know, and I think a big part of the journey was, was beginning to realize that the struggles we were having weren't because of other people. Mm -hmm. It wasn't because we just kept meeting, you know, crazy person. women or, mm -hmm. or, you know, jerky men or what. It wasn't because of the wrong person over and over again. It was because of something inside of us. Mm -hmm. And so I know for me that part of my journey was going, well, who do I have to become mm -hmm. so that I can create this relationship that I want, so I can have this relationship that I really want? I love the way that you say that right. because I remember going from, so I, I have been married before, and I remember after getting divorced, I thought, okay, I've got to get healthy. Like, you know, for whatever reasons, you know, I, I was the one who was broken up with. I was totally heartbroken. And then, but then I was like, you know what, I, I want to have like a healthy relationship and I want to do it differently this time because I was really trapped in those, in that model. Like I have no control over my situation. I, I can't tell who I, I, I have no idea who I'm going to love. And so I'm really like resonating with what you guys are saying. Yeah, I mean, most people date backwards, right? Mm -hmm. It's like we, we go on this date, we have a lot of hope, right? Mm -hmm. And then if we get all the feels with that person, we're working really hard trying to like make it work. Like how do I keep mm -hmm. this feeling? And yet, you know, usually when we feel good, 
we generally aren't that delusional to think it's going to last forever, right? Like nobody's ever like, oh my gosh, I feel so blissful. I think it's going to last forever. Mm -hmm. But yet when we are heartbroken and we feel badly, we lie to ourselves that way. We're like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, this pain is never going to leave me, right? We have this right. inner dialogue that says it's going to last. So those feelings in the beginning, they do need to be there. That spark of attraction does need to be there. You can't forfeit it, but you can't leverage only that right? right so dating backwards is this idea of like oh I have these feelings so this must be the right person and that's mm -hmm. not the only ingredient mm -hmm. right like if you're making bread right like yeast is an essential ingredient but just yeast does not bread make right that's right you gotta have some flour some <laughs> sugar good job <laughs> from the woman who doesn't cook I know those yeah. three ingredients I like, and bread I think you're making a cake <laughs> <laughs> I think you're making a cake <laughs> I, I have very sugary bread <laughs> it works we'll go with it so <laughs> you guys work with people though all over the world there's because remotely you can certainly do all you do how how does it work so we coach over the phone actually it's a conference line that we work on and it is we like to joke it's two-on-one coaching because you get both of us the whole time that you're working with us. So you get the male perspective, you get the female perspective, mm -hmm. and you get all the tools that we bring to help people really transform their inner selves mm -hmm. so that they can then become the person they need to be to create the love they want. I love that. And being able to have like, uh, so I, again, I went to therapy a couple of years after that, got healthy, and I have, I have a great relationship with my husband now, but it would have been so great to be able to have a man's opinion and a woman's mm -hmm. opinion at the same time. I think that's a really unique Such value. Such a unique perspective. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, ultimately, we are the guides to love, mm -hmm. right? We're the guide. And so, you know, we have a system, and that's it's a proven system that works. You know, mm -hmm. we've been working together a decade now, and we put our toolboxes together, so we have a really big toolbox. And some people, you know, we use some tools, and other people use other tools. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it really is sort of unique, especially when we're working in a private coaching situation, mm -hmm. right? We also have, you know, groups and we have online programs and digital programs that people could just buy at our site and download and it's like a do it yourself. But mm -hmm. you still have us guiding you, right? Speaking in your ear. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us, do you have a favorite story? Is there a favorite client situation that you could share with our viewers? There's actually lots of stories. Oh, do you have one so you many. want to do? Yeah, I'll so, go right ahead. So, uh, Every once in a while, like we'll finish a, a package and not everybody ends up with their person at the end of the coaching package, right? Mm -hmm. You certainly can't guarantee that because right. there's just timing in life. Right. So uh, we always follow up with people, mm -hmm. right? And just see how they're doing and check in. And, and we were doing a follow up with one of our clients and she's like, oh my God, I've been thinking about you guys. We're like, what, what's going on? She says, I met my guy, yeah, right? And, and then she stops, she goes, Everything you said is true. I didn't believe you when you told me, but everything you said is true, right? And so what, you know, what we know is there's certain ways that seem counterintuitive about the way we normally approach relationship, but actually if we do it this way, it, it works, right? Because so, it, it brings out what's really going on. Right, so you mentioned the word myth, and I'm super interested in that because I had to kind of retrain my brain about a few things. What are some of the myths that you encounter? Well, I mean, the biggest of all is like all the good ones are taken. That's mm -hmm. a, you know, that's a limiting belief. Yeah. It has nothing to do with the truth. I always think it's funny when people say I'm having trouble finding, you know, people to date. Mm -hmm. And we're like, well, you only need one. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, wait, right? Yeah. Like I'm not, I'm not with anybody else. I've been with Matthew now for quite some time, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I, you only need one. Mm -hmm. And so you don't need people to date. Mm -hmm. I, I always hate that generality of, oh, I need to find men or women People. that follow that have these characteristics no you don't right mm -hmm. and so it, I think that's one of the biggest myths right mm -hmm. and it's a limiting belief so what we believe to be true right is true for you so mm -hmm. each person has their limiting beliefs about love and honestly we could trace it all back to our family of origin right because mm -hmm. just like you learn to talk and walk and tie your shoe in your family of origin mm -hmm. right most people learn one way to tie their shoe right mm -hmm. and then they tie their shoe that way forever there's about a dozen plus ways to actually tie two loops on a shoe together mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a weirdo and I love research so <laughs> I actually I, I know of two I didn't know there were 12 that yeah there's a really lot of ways to tie a shoe and yeah. so you know when you first learned for example to tie a shoe it took a lot of focus and concentration yeah. 
concentration yeah. to do that thing. And so you learned, in a sense, how to do love mm -hmm. in your family of origin. Sure. And now that how you learned what love is is still just running in your subconscious on a program, attracting you to some people and making other people, you know, kind of like the extras in your own mm -hmm. personal movie. Like you don't even really see them. Right. Mm, right. Interesting. That's really interesting. So all the good ones are taken. The limit, kind of the limiting myths. That's a really good one. What is another one? Uh, I think one of the biggest myths we run up against too is that everybody on on a dating site is in some way a scam or uh, right, oh, trying that's to take a, advantage I hear of that one all the right. time. Yeah. We hear that all, all the, the time, time too, right? Yeah. Then we have other clients who, who seem to have no problem uh -huh. at all meeting nice people on right. dating apps mm -hmm. or on dating sites. My brother and sister-in-law met on JDate. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I, I, you know it's possible. My parents met on a blind date. You know it's mm -hmm. possible, right? You would never you tell somebody who was looking for a new job or a new career yeah. that, oh, do everything you can, but don't go on LinkedIn. Right? Yeah. The one place yeah. where you can most likely find a job, yeah. don't go there. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's what we think about with dating apps. It's mm -hmm. like, well, don't use that because nobody there is really looking for a relationship. And, mm -hmm. and that's kind of like crazy no. because. I mean, there's just as many people who are trying to BS you in person than there are on the dating sites. Like, on, on the dating <laughs> site, true. it's just a, a smaller <laughs> pool of all the people that are out in the world, right? Uh -huh. But there are a lot of people looking to have love, looking to have a relationship, uh -huh. looking to connect with that person. And so. I think it's really important. It's like a dating site or a dating app is just a tool, right? Mm -hmm. It's like if you bought a chainsaw mm -hmm. and you cut your arm off with it, is the chainsaw bad? No, yeah. it's just a tool, right? So you have to learn how to use uh -huh. the tool, right? And there are ways to protect yourself, certainly, mm -hmm. and not fall into some kind of catfish situation and, and all of that. But I think, it's, again, it's the belief system. If you mm -hmm. believe that you're going to be scammed on a dating site, well, guess what? It's, it might happen. Then people mm -hmm. are going to come after you wanting things from you, mm -hmm. right? That's interesting. Yeah, and it's interesting because like when you've been married for a while or we've yeah. been in a relationship for a while, sometimes you forget all of those things you had to like like figure out at first, mm -hmm. right? Like I remember that being kind of a big thing too. The other one I remember was when I was like, I said something kind of surprising. He's like, shut up. And I'm like, wait. You told, me, you told me to shut up. But really what he meant like was, no way, that's really interesting, you know, because he's right. a California boy. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> so just little things like that you don't yeah. think of. Anyway, so, that, so that's really interesting. So basically, know what you want. Don't be too accommodating at, to the point where you lose yourself is right. kind of what you're saying. So Which actually leads us to, to, the, mm -hmm. to a, another mistake that, mm -hmm. that so many people make, and mm -hmm. we call it twisting into a pretzel mm -hmm. to get love. Uh. Right. Um, we have a friend who's a marriage and family therapist, right? And oftentimes she works with couples and, and she would say a lot of times she'd have a couple where the man would say something like, well, when we were dating, we used to, mm -hmm. and whatever the thing was that they always used to do. And now we don't ever do that anymore. Mm -hmm. And the wife would look and say, yeah, well, we're married. We don't have to do that anymore. Uh, right, and it's a, it's kind of a bait and switch. I was just gonna say bait yeah. and switch. It's yeah. a total bait and switch, yeah. right? It's like who can I be to get you to love me and commit to me, and then I can stop being that once I have that love and commitment, right? Uh -huh. And what but, I, you know, sometimes it's more sorry. conscious like that, uh -huh. but other times it's really unconscious. Mm -hmm. It's like we get into sort of a people pleasing mode, right? Mm -hmm. How can I be nice? How can I be likable? I really like this person, mm -hmm. and I don't want to screw it up. Mm -hmm. And so we're not authentic. We're not really ourselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but twisting into a pretzel is just really hard because number one, we're making assumptions about what that other person wants that may not be true, and it's also really hard to not be you, right? It's like mm -hmm. trying to hold some complicated yoga pose and then just stay in it, it's right? Kind You're going to get exhausted, it is exhausted and relax back into being you. And so it's really important, especially through the dating process. Because mm -hmm. the dating process, you're supposed to cultivate discernment, mm -hmm. right? So you have you know who's a good ideal match for you and who isn't. And you should know rather quickly, right? Mm -hmm. Again, this idea of people don't understand that the dating process is a dating process. Because a lot of times what we do is we have all those feelings and then we jump into exclusivity. Mm -hmm. And that actually ends up wasting a lot of time because mm -hmm. then you're lather, rinse, and repeating through a cycle that lasts, you know, three, four, five, six, eight, ten months mm -hmm. before it doesn't work out and then you go out there dating again. So if you do the dating process correctly, right, you can cultivate that discernment and then when you settle into exclusivity, you're at a whole nother level of discovery to see if that person is a still, are they an ideal match for you mm -hmm. over time. 
right? Oh, there's so much. We could go on like this. I for know. Days. I know. <laughs> I feel the same way. I'm like, Strong give me more. Right. Give me Can more. We just do the whole show. <laughs> yeah. But on your website, which is loveonpurpose.com, mm -hmm. and we're going to post that. We'll post that on the screen. We'll also mm -hmm. put that on the website along with the segment. Um, but you have a lot more information there, and I understand you also have your seven mistakes that people make. And so people can download those or at least read them and see, yeah. see what's yeah. going on. I mean, we shared a couple here today of those mm -hmm. major mistakes and you can get the other five and a whole report. And if you're busy, you can listen to it. If you want to read them, you can read about them. Hey, as we go out, give us one more. This is so interesting. Okay. <laughs> well, what's I think one of my favorite is this, um, like trying to iron out all the conflicts, ah, right? Ah, that's a good one. Because if you're ironing out all the conflicts, then hello, how are you going to know if you're a, a match with that person when challenges arise. Mm -hmm. So much of the dating process is knowing how does that person handle that bump, right? Right? How do they, and you know, we're not going to end up with somebody who's the same as us. Like, you mm -hmm. know what? I'll be honest. Matthew handles stress very differently than I handle stress. We're two mm -hmm. different people. So it's about knowing that the person's going to be different than you, but are you in sync? Can you maneuver through it mm -hmm. together? Right? We're still together and, and spend every day together and work together and, and, and do all this together. And you together. actually still love each other. We oh my do. God. Yeah. Well, I know. <laughs> we still love each other. I, I love do. that. I mean, when, you know, if we're at a party and he's in the other room and then he walks in the room and I ca my heart automatically skips a beat still. Like, that's I'm like, that's oh. Wonderful. And that's what we want for everybody. So we're going to yeah. send them all to you at loveonpurpose.com. Yes. Orna and Matthew Walters, thank you so much thank for joining you. us. Yeah, it has been you. a pleasure and happy Valentine's Day. Happy thank Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. And we'll be right back.